Hello, everybody. We're watching as Clay corrects his video camera placement. Watch as he stumbles in the back for some tool or other and approaches the camera again. And it looks like a multi tool of some kind that he's opening. Uh, we haven't seen these kind of tools in a long time. It's amazing that he needs one of these tools to adjust the camera of maybe of such high quality that he needs a special tool such as this. I hear you talking. You burn up and talking about me. We are not talking about him. Of course we're not. If we are talking, we're talking in the most dulcet tones and quiet tones of no one should ever suspect that uh, I am an actual wildlife. Oh, better. You can see so much more of my. Damn it. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> okay, he's not back. Oh, and then he puts on the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That's, uh, you know, that's a thing. We just had Lord Attenborough describing all of your oh, yeah. actions. Yes, good. What, good what thing, Lord Attenborough. Uh, it, we spent a lot of money on that, and that was totally an imp uh, It wasn't an improvised thing. That was totally a script and set up by you. So. Yes, that was, uh, you know, we we totally squandered our budget for the entire fiscal year. Good we job. We did. We did. Well, uh, Clay, how the hell are you? I'm good. I'm good, my friend. How are you? I can't complain too much. I'm feeling much better now. After, oh, that's uh, good. So you were sick. You got the frogitis. As, I got the frogitis, a.k.a. Yeah. COVID. You know, I, I know uh, these terms are loosely based. Or you cut out. Well, shit. I'll just uh, take over from here, everybody. Clay, this is uh, Clay. I'm Clay. This is Cinematic Suffering. I'm just going to host the show by myself now. Jason, unfortunately, has died of COVID. Oh, hey, Jason. <laughs> I miraculously cut recovered, my friend. I oh, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you came back from the dead. That's good. Oh, man. Well, it seems like we've both had a couple of mishaps here. I, I did. I was playing with uh, a new camera that I did buy. Uh, it, it unfortunately wasn't the camera that you decided to buy. I was like, oh, okay. let me go for something a little cheaper. And uh, it came in today and I was fooling around with it and it's a piece of shit. So I'm sending oh, it right back. Tough. Yeah, that's the thing is you, like you can spend five hundred dollars on something that's a piece of shit. Also, yeah. <laughs> but so far I'm pretty happy with the uh, ZVF one. I think it's called. I yeah. forget what it's called. But. I just went straight for the old uh, uh, iPhone here, so it's got a looks okay. like it has a has a better picture than the other camera that I was trying out. So looks fine. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, guys, this is Cinematic Suffering, and I'm Jason. I am Clay. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. Y'all, we appreciate you joining. Uh, yeah, I, I, Clay, you're on the left side now, and I'm on the right. It's totally it's, throwing it's, off our whole rhythm. It's disorienting, for sure. I, I accidentally hit the back button on my mouse here, uh -huh. um, and then everything went quiet, and I started panicking. Well, maybe I can just start randomly clicking buttons in the layout down here. That, would, <laughs> that wouldn't screw things up, would it? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, but uh, okay, yeah, so we actually watched Frogman, a found footage film from 2023. And, That's correct, yes. Yeah, and these are our thoughts and opinions on this odd found footage film. Yeah, it's um, I have a question for you What is your favorite cryptid as a kid or as an adult? Well, you know, uh, I was obsessed as a kid with the Loch Ness Monster. I, I I was always fascinated by a, a, a dinosaur that could possibly be living in some closed off lake in Scotland. And it always seemed eerie to me and especially how they described the lake and how dark and deep it was and just how prehistoric and that really, that, that, that spurred my imagination. So yeah, that was definitely, my favorite cryptid. Definitely captured the attention and the imagination of children. I remember as a kid, that they had uh, cryptid books in the library, which uh, is kind of fun. But, like <laughs> oh, you can oh, learn oh, about all kinds of stuff, including Bigfoot and Nessie in the in the uh, old library there. Yeah, were these books like under the science section or labeled under the fantasy? Or I remember? think that it was actually in the science section, which right. is kind of like all right. I <laughs> So, I don't so, know that that's helpful. Do you think? Uh, do you think 
like like out of all the cryptids that have been listed, um, is there a possibility that maybe one of them are actually true? I'm a very cynical person. I'm going to say no, but, okay. um, you know, that doesn't keep me from having my favorite cryptid. My favorite right, cryptid yeah. is uh, got to be the Chupacabra. I the love chupacabra. the Chupacabra. Um, I like the Skinwalkers for the sheer, uh, you know, imagination that went into concocting something. But I, yeah. no, I don't think that they're real. But, you know, I mean, the real world is often stranger than fiction. So you never know. I, yeah. I can be proved wrong. And I know, I know that uh, cryptids. Some cryptids can be based off some kind of reality. There's the story of this. Uh, I wish I had it brought up. There, there's an Australian <laughs> uh, animal, a uh, four-legged animal that looked weird and crazy. It went extinct, but it was an actual animal. But no one thought it was real until hunters or whatever captured it and get, actually got photos of it. And turned out that this cryptid that would been a myth for years was an actual real animal but it was on the ver verge of extinction and it's a weird looking tiger thing as i recall some yeah. something in the cat family and it was it was weird looking i've seen um photos of it which right. you know these days you gotta you gotta suspect everything but this was before the days of ai but yeah that was that was a good one yeah yeah so i i if if I ask myself that same question, if I think there's a basis of truth, I think, uh, like you, I'm a little cynical. I'm skeptic. I'm very skeptical about things. Um, but that's not to say I'm not going to keep my mind open to the possibility that if something is found, then by God, I was proven wrong, and that's great. You know, there's a Sasquatch, and they just hang him up by his dead, mutilated body. <laughs> Look totally for the zipper. Look for the zipper. He's vivisected in half. You know, and. You know, but like, oh, his gullet's full of hands and feet. That's crazy. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if anyone uh, who hasn't seen Frogman, what we're talking about is that Frogman is actually based on an actual cryptid. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, like they actually show, I believe, the uh, the little, uh, you know, uh, store that the that they show in there is probably an actual store that they sell Frogman yeah. merch at. Yeah, I thought all that stuff was set up in the in the film of, you know, Frogman is here, go out and see the Frogman and uh, Frogman merch. And there's all these drawings of Frogman <laughs> at the very beginning. And uh, I thought it was just kind of an elaborate uh, thing that the production did to, you know, make it seem real and everything. But after the movie, you know, I think that did, I don't, I, I'm assuming you did your research, but I did oh, my man. research. And uh, I got this from a guy screaming to me on a camera from a truck in ohio not the usual florida <laughs> one that i get oh. info from and yeah. yeah so yeah there is actually a loveland frogman and now my mistake during the watch through is that i thought they were in loveland texas which yeah. was you know a mistake and it's loveland ohio yeah and i, I think we might have even made a, a comment about ohio through the watch through <laughs> I think we did. It just like I can, I could. They must have mentioned it in passing, and I. It that's always my jumping off point to start uh, making digs at my home state. <laughs> uh, there's something about the Midwest that it just fosters, uh, you know, these cryptid myths. I think that people are bored, and there's not much else going on, so they right. invent uh, creatures that bump around in the night. Frogman has to be the byproduct of uh, hallucinogenics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of other the cryptids like the Mothman and you yeah. know, the, the Chupacabra and the, the Jersey Devil. And, and of course, you know, uh, we have to mention Sasquatch, Bigfoot, and yet you know, all these stuff that are just completely insane. But <laughs> the fact that, that, but all these seem like monsters or entities that are of their own you know species or they're they differentiate themselves from looking like an animal or a human being if, if there's some similarities it's it's odd but this is totally just they call him the frog man but it's just a dude walking around on two legs it looks like a frog right <laughs> and he's got a scepter for some reason he's got a magical scepter which magical scepter. kind of pulls me out of it. it like you you've got me up to a certain point and that's yeah. when you lose me when he's as soon as he's magic then you you've lost the uh you know the cynical uh <laughs> skeptical <laughs> part of your audience right yeah yeah because uh, you know he's like oh if this is like barely seen or purely people have gotten like these weird pictures but you know the fact that they added a wand to it totally Come unbelievable on. i'm not yeah, I know. For this. pull me right out of this movie but um <laughs> 
Well, let's talk a little bit about this movie. This is the brainchild of director and writer Anthony Cousins, and it was co-written by John Carsco, and the film stars Nathan Tima, Tim... Mm, Tim... 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 Timoshuk, thank you. Timoshuk. Nathan Timoshuk, Benny Barrett, and Ali Daniels, who I found out through my scant research that uh, those are friends of Anthony Cousins, who he's worked with on other projects, but this is the first time all three of them have worked together. Honestly. Right. Yeah, and um, the the movie starts off with them being in 1999, and you see this lo-fi camera footage of a family and two kids and one of them is the character that nathan is playing and who is dallas dallas i was saying about to say you're close close. (laughs) one of those cities so dallas (laughs) dallas is one of these kids and he sees uh uh, something in the woods and it closes up on this funny frog face and i think we're both laughing at that point but the (laughs) The thing about this is, uh, in uh, from a technical as- aspect, I-, I had to rent this movie on YouTube. I couldn't find it on Prime. I couldn't really find it anywhere else. Um, so I just rented it off of Prime, and there's like the HD version, which is four ninety nine, and then there's the <laughs> SD version, which was three ninety nine. You know, I'm going for the uh, the HD version, right? And then yeah. the whole goddamn thing's filmed low fi eight, not eight, <laughs> not even eight millimeter. Yeah, I guess around that 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 uh, camera it, frame it was, rate. But- it- it was filmed on high eight on high eight. Yes. Yeah. And so it just, I felt like I wasted a whole buck on that. <laughs> not, yeah. not the entire, not the entire thing, because I think in the end, I, I, I had an okay time with the movie, but I was kind of kicking myself for losing that dollar. Anyways, <laughs> I've done the same thing running riff tracks. They have the same scam, no offense guys, but uh, well, I mean, and I don't want to go off on some big tangent, but damn it. Like you would rent, the HD version, or you'd just buy, you had to buy the movies back then. You'd, yeah. you'd buy this riff tracks for $12 instead of 10. And then you'd watch the thing and you'd be like, this looks like shit because it was filmed in the eighties. <laughs> so it's only going to look so good. It's totally wasted money. And then a month later, all those same riff tracks are available on Amazon prime. So, right. you know, uh, but you know, what can you do? I was supporting I know. creators that I like. Sure, sure. And uh, so that was just my little my little bitch at the beginning there. Uh, we did have more technical complications when we were first trying to watch it. But uh, so, yeah, it transitions out of that. So I guess uh, Dallas is now obsessed with uh, this frog man. It's affected his life so much that he doesn't have a job. He's what? Uh, well, uh, Internet bullies have just kind of <laughs> ran him down and made fun of him and, and called him, uh, you know, like a... Uh, I, like anybody would be that obsessed with this little kid that thought he saw a frog man and then right. messed with him his entire adult life. And it just, <laughs> it turned him into like, it turned frog man into Moby Dick and turned him into this, you know, kind of cynical Ahab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, no, <laughs> Captain I don't Ahab. Even remember which one, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. literary scholar. Oh, I know. Look at that, us. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah, so it turns into some kind of, you know, yeah obsession for him <laughs> and but uh, i i did learn that we we the, that anthony cousins that most of this film was improv there's few <laughs> you don't moments. say <laughs> there's a few scripted moments and uh, i because i was watching a, a review with him an interview with him and uh he was mentioning that and so i thought that was uh i thought that was like uh kind of like oh yeah that's definitely you can definitely tell that in the movie that they're totally improving a lot of this stuff. Kind of reminds me of the old ones or the deep ones in that way. That both films felt very kind of just say a bunch of stuff and it'll work out. But okay, I don't know that it does. <laughs> yeah, and the similarities between the deep ones and Frogman, uh, they're, they're they're there. Yeah, like the deep ones, you can tell that they just wanted it to look like a movie a little bit more. See, that's the thing about found footage. It's like. I, I was thinking about this today. It's almost like the noise core of of films. It's like, you know, you, you could say it's a bold deconstruction of the art form, but it's 
or is it just an excuse to be lazy and have bad <laughs> lighting and bad sound design and bad cinematography and just do all this stuff that they tell you in film 101 don't do yeah. like fire hose the camera everywhere. <laughs> yeah and there's the and there's other final footage films that i've i've seen that have been of course guilty that you know that you go right back to Blair Witch, which was, I wouldn't say it's the first one, but it was the one that really popped out, you know, it was the popular one. Yeah, um, that's the one. There, there were there were movies that, uh, you know, like you say, that use that same formula first. And um, that's the thing. It's it's easy for people to, to crap on found footage movies, but there's also a reason why there's so many of them out there is yeah. people do watch them. And when they're effective, they're really good. It's... <laughs> Yeah. You know, like it, it, like I I liked Frog Lord, or Frog Lord, Frog Man for what it is. Um, you know, right. we'll talk about Frog Lord a little bit later. <laughs> uh, but it, you know, like it's standing in stark contrast with other films, like the VHS films, or you know, films yeah. like. Uh, 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 like exists that I really like. That was a um, that was a Sasquatch found footage. Oh, okay, movie. yeah, I've heard of that one. I haven't seen it though. That was pretty uh, good. Yeah, and there, you know, uh, the, the director Anthony Cousins, he did he did mention that he was like hugely inspired by Blair, by Blair Witch, of course. Uh, but there's yeah. another couple of movies like Willow Creek in 2013, and another one called Digging Up the Marrow in 2014 that he had some pretty big inspiration. Now I have never heard of those films i've seen the first uh, the first one you mentioned but it's been so long that I've, yeah. I've kind of forgotten it the other one i've never heard i love the title though that's a that's a metal title yeah i'm i'm very interested in watching those movies for sure uh, i did see uh, i remember uh, recommending to you hey maybe we should watch the outwaters and okay. but then i decided just on a whim just just watch it by myself and it it got it got a lot of critical praise and i'm somehow wondering how that happened because yeah. you cannot literally see, there's nothing to be seen in the last half of that movie until the very end when the sun comes up that's when you see something kind of graphic happen but the entire time for about 40 minutes it's just screaming running lights flare, flaring everywhere you don't see anything and i was hugely disappointed and pissed at that um, it's one of those things I just had to fast forward a lot through at the very end because I just couldn't see anything. But. Yeah, and it's and it, that seems to be the downfall of a lot of these found footage movies is that they follow such a predictable pattern. And and Frogman unfortunately kind of fell into that. It was a lot of setup, a lot of these characters being zany and and like you mentioned, ad libbing a bunch of their lines and uh, you know, oh, let's be funny. That like it's uh, let's have a bunch of fun. It's it's the calm before the storm. Yeah, and then. It, it followed every beat exactly of a found footage film. Like yeah. you, you, you got your payoff at the end and they, they did pay it off pretty they good. Did pay it off, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it to them. The, uh, the frog man effects were pretty damn good for yeah. the context of the movie that we were in. And uh, side note this, I think it's pretty funny. They did very little, um, digital effects it was mostly practical effects and what yeah. they did do is that they went in afterwards and added his eyes blinking and i got to thinking about it and i was like what does that remind me of and i i was like yeah it's baby yoda it's the same way that they did grogu in the uh star wars show it's just this puppet and then they after <laughs> they did the post-production of him blinking his eyes i, I had no idea that I, I learned something new here every day yeah. I didn't know that. That's that's cool. And, the, and it's when his throat was, you probably couldn't even sell, but they went in uh, post production and made his his waddle billow. Oh, Grogu's. Oh well, now the, uh, <laughs> the frog man. The frog man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I just remember Grogu's big bloated belly and his long slippery tongue coming. <laughs> but yeah, this was a uh, this was um, I thought. The characters were, I mean, for for all their ad libbing, some of it was just really cheesy. But I did kind of connect with Dallas when, because the girl, I can't remember her, her Amy, her character, her Amy, uh, she was going off and doing this hick, uh, like big deep southern accent and uh, howdy so y'all, we're here in Love Lord and we're doing this blah blah blah. But to see Dallas visibly 
He's like, stop that shit, you know, pretty much. And I was like, yes, tell her. Don't put a- <laughs> Yeah, just, I mean, like, ladies, just because you're hot doesn't mean that you can act any any kind of way. She was wearing one of those uh, cheesy cowboy hats that drunken girls at, at wear at Halloween or at parties or at the bar. Like, you can't wear that out into the world. You leave that at yeah leave that at the party and all of that was kind of like a spur of the moment thing where they're like oh i should be a reporter and then they just took it up a notch so um seeing dallas's reaction or i should nathan's (laughs) nathan the actors nathan it it, it was it struck genuine with his annoyance at it and i'm not sure if that was an actual you know improv (laughs) or if he was really annoyed because he kept doing it maybe it's like (laughs) like i can't uh you know it's it's really hard for me to get into this role where i'm supposed to like you when i viscerally uh, not like you so (laughs) much right now like ali can we cut here for a second stop that shit we have to stop it (laughs) (laughs) that's i got a safe word (laughs) but i I remember was talking at the beginning of the watch through um and i don't know how much of uh, again we're going to jump into maybe some spoiler territory here um so at this point on you might want to you know go watch the film or if you've ever seen it you know just stick with us but hit the like button then go watch it and then come back yeah and watch sure. the rest of this uh so you know we said at the beginning of the watch through uh like you were like if i don't see someone get in- <laughs> head first ingested by this uh frog man <laughs> then this moves is a piece of shit or it lacks, it lacks <laughs> any integrity at all and I was like, if I if I don't see a, a, a frogman's tongue wrapped around someone and trying to pull it in his mouth, then this, I was like the same thing. This has, movie has no integrity at all. But hey, that paid off. That paid off. It's exactly it what happened. Uh, it, it, it really did. You know, I mean, like you have to, I feel like you have to kind of get through a, a bit of a slog of a movie. It's uh, it, and I know it like it's supposed to be found footage, which, you know, it's like I just mentioned is is an excuse for it to look bad but geez it looked bad there were some moments where there's so little ambient light that you can barely even that the the camera can barely even capture anything because there's no light coming in the sound sounded like they were uh using the the this ancient cameras onboard mic to capture it It was just (laughs) god it looked shitty yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what the crew was like, if it was just maybe uh, Anthony there doing everything behind the scenes and <laughs> and everyone else just kind of playing a part. Um, uh, I wish I got more insight into that from the interview that I read from uh, Watch, but I didn't hear anything about what kind of crew they had. Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention that much. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it paid off for sure at the end. I thought it, it, it did definitely pull in some moments from the deep ones or the shadow over Innsmouth, you know, or yeah, Dagon where, you know, the, I keep saying, you know, but you know, if you know, I you know. know, if you know, you uh, know, the, well, uh, yeah, like yeah. you had the, the cultists and that kind of thing. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you, you kind of saw where that was heading anyways. And it, it, it was predi- predi- predictable in that aspect. I, I, I felt there was some padding there, of course, you know, the, you know, the, the montage dance scene in the hotel room and uh, just the, the interaction between uh, Amy and Dallas, as I guess they used to be a thing, or maybe they weren't a thing. Maybe they just hooked up one time. And that's, that's the, that's the gist that I got is that they yeah. hooked up once. And then it's like, no, let's just be friend. It's like, no, I, no, that's not. <laughs> but overall, it, it it didn't really connect me to those characters that much because it just no. felt like it was like an off an offside. Hey, we should throw this in just for a little more character development. Um, but I did have some guests though show up um, just just now, Clay. So, oh, did you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you mind if I let them in? And sure. Okay. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear anything? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, uh, I let me just make sure they get, I get them on screen here, or at least uh, so they can talk. Okay, okay, guys, come on in. <gasps> Why? The memories. Oh Why? wow. <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm gonna oh, get. Please. I'm gonna get me some frog punch. <laughs> oh, no. oh God. Uh, okay. We'll just stop. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, that, I just it was so glad that those guys could come by, come by, and yeah, uh, that's great. Remind yeah. us of all awesome Budweiser is. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what frogs do, is that they're <laughs> hopeless alcoholics, and they that's drink it, the worst beer that you can swill. I think that should have been, like, at the very end there, where you, you just see Frog Frogman just popping open a Budweiser, chugging it, sharing it with his uh, frog buddies and the cultists. Yeah, they did kind of miss a, an opportunity to have uh, Frogman be a lascivious humper of things, you know, <laughs> like uh, the Feast movies went down that road. It's, oh, it's, God, yeah. <laughs> I think everything's been done. Everything has been done. Like, you just have to kind of uh, do something familiar in kind of a new way. But we've seen it all. It's, yeah. It's, Kind of sad. I guess, uh, like, the only uh, little things were, you know, that when he filmed this, uh, what's his name, uh, Anthony Cousins filmed it, that, you know, the 1999 scenes that he he specifically filmed in a car that was made around 1999 or before that. Yeah. He said he just had a hard time kind of filming around that because you know, it's more or less a gorilla kind of uh, way of filmmaking. So, Every time a car would pass, he he keep trying to keep the cars out of the frame because there'd be yeah. like newer, you know, a Tesla roll by or something. So he would, he had a hard time uh, kind of keeping that in that time frame and everything. So it, it, I thought it was interesting to hear the, some of those uh, filmmaking aspects. It is, and it's a it, you know, it's it's a neat quality that happens anytime we kind of go back and do research. Is it's I'm all like I'm often kind of find myself like uh a little bit more hesitant to just kind of go all in on the film and just just <laughs> rake it over the coals because yeah. you hear these earnest uh interviews with the filmmakers and you realize like for one thing we most of us kind of realize is that that these independent filmmakers that make these kind of movies aren't making a lot of money if anything they're losing money a lot yeah. of times a lot of times they get screwed over by the people distributing them it's genuinely a labor of love and they really do love the project and yeah. you, you hear these interviews and it's like oh man i feel bad <laughs> talking all this trash about this movie that you obviously put a lot of love and yeah. care into even if the final product is a bit of a slog to get through it yeah and i know this was his first uh, uh feature film he said he yes. did do several uh shorts and stuff like that but he thought it's finally time to make something so you know uh, kudos to anthony cousins, cousins. for for making frog man i technically i'd been wanting to see this for quite a while i had seen it pop up in my queue i'd see you know down people's like hey has anyone seen frog man it's kind of cool you know and it has had a little buzz about it and i was like yeah I really want to watch this but uh, if it turns out to be really bad i want to make sure it's on <laughs> that we yeah yeah, that yeah you that watch it too <laughs> yeah like uh i what's funny is that i came to know about frog man through the band frog lord i'm a fan of uh frog lord which is a a one-man uh doom metal band uh based out of the uk and it's it's kind of meant to be that these two creative forces would meet because they have a very similar aesthetic. It's all yeah. uh, like Frog Lord. All of his stuff is very homemade self, you know, kind of DIY aesthetic. <laughs> and, and like it, it was meant to be that he would do the uh, soundtrack for the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it gelled very well with what was happening. So I, I think my overall opinion was that I did. I did enjoy Frogman. Uh, yeah. Was it, was it the best movie I've ever seen? No, but was, has it been one of the better found footage movies I've seen in a while? Yeah, probably it has. Yeah, I think that you, you have to go into it knowing what you're going to get. It's it's yeah. it's very much a, a kind of DIY popcorn movie. Uh, you know, like put it on with your friends and just kind of like maybe even get into some side conversations while stuff's going on and then focus when the frog man <laughs> action happens towards the end of the film. We, we, I mean, uh, through our watch through, and if you want to watch our watch through, it is going to be up on YouTube very soon. All you have to do is just time code, watch the movie and follow, link up our time code. You're going to see that we're going to be throwing facts at you left and right about, Con about frogs. frogs. Yeah. Concerning frogs. You're going to learn so much from our watch through. So I highly recommend you watch it through that, through that means. 
That's right. That's right. If you uh, if you don't have any friends of your own, we'll be your uh, stand in friends that like to make fun of movies with you. And I was rewatching the uh, our you know commentary today in preparation for our review, and I, I was laughing out loud at a couple parts. You know, yeah. it's like not not patting ourselves on the back here, but <laughs> some of those some of our zingers were pretty funny. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nice fun time uh, going through the footage and putting up a highlight reel too for that one. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Did you know? Speaking of frog facts, that a group of frogs is called an army. I did not know that. Yeah, and and, and it's ironic because frogs are notorious draft dodgers. So. <laughs> You're gonna hear comedy gold like that off the off the cuff. That was totally not written. That's Mm-mm. pure improv. See, uh, Anthony Cousins could learn from improvers like us. Yeah, that just yeah, that never write anything beforehand. Yeah, ever. exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Clay, what, what is your what was your final verdict of Frogman? Oh, it, it was fl- flawed but fun. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was flawed but fun. Uh, that the ending, uh, I, the 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 first half will drag a little bit for people, but I think the last half, you know, really kind of sells it. Uh, the practical effects, yeah, there was a little kind of digital uh, fixing in post but it's not obvious you don't know it's there everything else was totally in camera effects i believe yeah or, yeah it was uh, like they they did a frog he said that they actually um did more visual effects but when they looked at it it just wasn't working so they went back and made a suit so. oh really well yeah. i mean they, they pulled it off really well and yeah, they uh, did they I did thought, it was one of those things that yeah. it really worked so. and they didn't like the, the you see the reveal uh just long enough to know oh shit and then the camera of course goes crazy and all hell breaks loose but uh yeah for me i i, I I enjoyed it will i watch it again probably not but you know yeah yeah watching it once and then watching it again and in, in uh, like preparation for this review is, is probably as many <laughs> times as i'm gonna watch it. what's funny is that there's like kind of a a twist at the end that i won't spoil it here but it's it's funny because the whole tone of the film shifts and it's almost like a way that anthony cousins is showing us like i know how to actually film a film see how it <laughs> looks nice and everything. like it's like he needed that as part yeah. of his reel or something. uh i i will definitely keep an eye out for any Anything he does in the future, though, I, yeah. I'd be curious where this uh, young filmmaker goes with uh, his future projects. I, you know, it would it, that would be exciting, and I'm I, I wish that for a lot of the uh, the the filmmakers that we review on here. I think a lot of them are uh, headed for big things. I always kind of reference Fede Alvarez, and you know, his early yeah. films kind of look a lot different than the Evil Dead remake or Don't Breathe. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, so blah, blah, I think that's about it. Guys, if you made it this far, I hope you hit that like button. I hope you subscribe. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, that like button. If you're listening to any other way, make sure you leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to your on your favorite podcast platform. Shoot us a comment. Shoot us a comment. Do, do we have to plug anything? I don't think I have anything to plug, so... Oh, I've got a art channel that I'm slowly but surely working on called Claytanix Art Layer. If you want to, if you like uh, art uh, follow alongs and watching me draw weird stuff, uh, check that out. I did mention that you were drawing many caricatures of uh, Warren J. Harding. Uh, oh, yes. Our, I think our 29th president. Because uh, I remember you're obsessed about that. So I just put that in a little comment on our page. That everyone... Yeah, I'm going to jump to Calvin Coolidge soon. Who's oh, our 30th president. Damn. Oh, my nipples just got hard. Oh, they're milking now. They're oh, I'm going to twist the ball. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, until next time, uh, may you all suffer. 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 <coughs> suffer. All right. Bye. See you.